Hello everyone, welcome to today's Water Cooler Chat, where we talk about all things live peer, whether it's delegating, broadcasting, transcoding, developing, or anything to do with the live peer ecosystem. We're here to ask questions and get answers. Um, so yeah, we got a couple topics today, and um, I see a couple more people joining us, so we'll finish off introductions and then jump right into our topics. Uh, so Papa Bear has joined us. Would you like to introduce yourself and a topic? Um, yeah, I'm sorry. Papa Bear, and I run the Solar Farm Orchestrator. Uh, I've been doing this for about two years, or a little over two years. Um, uh, I didn't hear what the previous topics were, but um, I'm going to guess that there's probably some discussion about the, um, the uh, sorry, the Delta proposal and the, uh, the uh, um, I don't even know what, what the, 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 the LIP state that's 92. Right now. LIP 92. LIP 92, thank you. And uh, I, yeah, I thought that would be good to discuss if no one's brought it up. And um, I think that's probably the main, main topic. Very good. I like it. Thank you for joining us, Papa Bear. John, would you like to introduce yourself on the topic? Hey, this is John with Elite Encoder. I've been operating for about two years. Um, trying to think of a topic for today. I don't have anything off the top of my mind. I'm just listening in. Very good. Thank you for joining us. Um, another topic I wanted to quickly bring up was actually um, just the role of the orchestrator node for traffic um, in the scalable sense of live peer in general. So um, I know this has been brought up in the past, but I just want to, uh, if we run out, if we finish the LIP 92 topic, uh, that'd be another topic I'd like to cover. Um, Okay, uh, let's uh, jump right into the number one topic of today, which is LIP92. Um, this is a uh, the third proposal, I believe, um, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I have to double check again here, but I believe it is the third proposal in the abstract for the uh, Delta upgrade. And the Delta upgrade is this concept of a live peer treasury and it's actually the fourth proposal. Uh, so we got LIP 90, uh, 89, 90, 91, and 92, which are all relative to this uh, treasury. And so, you know, what this treasury is, is basically a, a portion of, of LPT inflation head to um, this treasury, which is distributed to DAOs and projects that are going to be doing public goods funding for Libpeer. And uh, just this last week, um, Doug has put out the 92 proposal, which is actually discussing the uh, treasury contribution percentage. So this is the uh, percentage of the LPT inflation that will be going to the treasury, as well as the, the, the ceiling, the max cap that the treasury will be allowed to hold. Uh, so tentatively, he has put forward a proposal saying that 12.5% is the amount that will be um, shifted into the treasury from all inflation. And from there, I believe 750,000 LPT will be the max ceiling um, for, again, this proposal. And these are two both items that can be voted on and changed at any time. Uh, so there's a forum thread about this, and uh, there's been some comments so far. So with that kind of overview, does anyone want to start us off with, um, yeah, their um overview of the proposal what their opinion is and uh, yeah who wants to kick us off yeah I'll, I'll jump in i think we've all at this point decided that this proposal is is a good idea in general um but i don't agree personally with the numbers that have been presented um right now we have no evidence that this will even work um, and 12.5% is a static number across all delegators and all orchestrators. Uh, that seems very high to me. Also, 750,000 for the cap, that will take us, I think we ran a few numbers um, that would like take two and a half years to even hit. Um, and 12.5% uh, per year in USD at current prices is like 1.5 million. I don't understand why that's necessary, um, why you would enter something like this, an experimental DAO, you know, functioning tiered voting system with such a high number across the board. Um, it's just like, who, how are we going to disperse that amount of money? And at the same time, we're hurting delegators and orchestrators. Um, so that number doesn't make sense to me. I think 
like 5% or a tiered system based on how much stake you have would make a lot more sense. Um, see if it works, if there's high demand for it, if the funding is going places that it should be, if the demand side is increasing, then we can vote to increase it. But 12.5%, I mean, that is a ton of money every single day um, for something we don't even know if it will work. And 750000 for a cap, why? Those, those are my questions. Those are my concerns. Yeah, it, it is very interesting. Um, I'm not sure where he got those numbers from, but obviously um, Doug has put out the, the, uh, th this... I mean, you got to start somewhere, obviously, with the proposal, right? You got to start with some number. And luckily, he's opened it up, um, as he should, into a forum, which is for us to discuss this number. So this is a perfect opportunity for us to discuss it. Ben, do you have, like, are you, would you recommend 5%? Like, uh, and what, what would be the numbers that you would change to if you were to do for a proposal? For me, 5% is more than fair. It's still like 1700 bucks. I think it's a pop bear. You can correct me. I'm not sure if that's a day or a week. That would that, be that's a day. It would be like, you know, close to $12,000 a week. Yeah, I mean, that, at, at current, current LPT price. That's still like $600,000 a year um, into the treasury. So 5% is more than fair in my eyes. But I also like what Ryan put in the forum post, which is a tiered system, um, because this does seem like a tax. And... You know, uh, Doug did compare it to nation states and they want to compare it to the U.S. or a lot of first world countries. The taxing is, is tiered based, right? If, if you have a crap ton of LPT, maybe you should be taxed a little more. So maybe it starts at 0%, goes up to 2%, then 5%, then 10%, then 125 and maybe 15 to even 20 um, depending on how much stake you have. Uh, but going in directly with 125 across the board, I mean, that... That's that's going to be a big treasury, and it's I don't know I don't know where that money's going to go. So um, I'll give you a little pushback because I'd be kind of curious to see um, where this goes. But I mean, right now a hundred percent is going to supply side, and zero percent is going to demand side. So does it make sense that ninety five percent still goes to the supply side, and five percent goes to the demand side? when we have insane amount of supply already? Yes, absolutely. Uh, because we need proof of concept and you don't go into proving something to be true with such a high number. Um, because we know for a fact that 12.5% will be taken from us, but we don't know for a fact that the demand side will increase. So we are looking at pain for orchestrators and delegators regardless. We are willing, I am willing to give up more than 125 if the concept is proven, but regardless of 95% going here, 5% going there, 5% is more than enough to create a very healthy and abundant treasury that will, I just don't see it like something being funded every day. Um, so I think within two to three weeks to a month, it'll already be packed to the brim with, with funding ready to go somewhere. Um, so yeah, I, I think, where we are right now uh, with the price of LPT being so low and, and the hits we've already taken there, it would not be right to take 12.5%. Um, if we were making ETH right now, uh, I, I don't care about LPT if, if we can make enough ETH, but we're not. So this hurts um, and the concept hasn't been proven. Cool. Um, so you, you did mention on the progressive tax thing, but we're gonna, we'll come back to that a bit later. Why don't we get some more opinions um, of the initial assessment on this? Does anyone else want to jump in? I just punched those numbers in and, and looked at it. You know, it looks like 12.5 would be like a little over 1,000 LPT a day at current rate of inflation. Um, I think it is a little bit high, and, and I think 5% is a good ground to start at. Um, it, it may be more than enough, but, you know, accounting for we don't know where inflation is going to go in the future, that, that may become insufficient at some point. Um, but I, I like the I like the 5% number. Yeah, and also just, just to answer your question, um, uh, Titan, that you asked about uh, where Doug got the 12.5%, um, it's in the proposal. Um, he, um, let's see, where did that line go? Um, 
he says that um, the discussion for the proposal, uh, it's, uh, sorry, um, if you're looking for an, av if you look at average tax to GDP ratio of productive nation states, you'll see that often falls at around 10 to 25% range. Um, so he picked 12.5 uh, to be on the low side of that 10 to 25% range of um, tax rates of productive um, nation states. So just to answer that question of where the, where he got the 12.5 or how he came to that number. Oh, if you think, interesting. Uh, that is, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, if you think about it, um, I think, you know, most, a lot of orchestrators are around 10%, maybe a little higher, a little lower on their cuts, right? Um, and, and that's not all the inflation, but, you know, there's, there's sort of 10% going to that supply side, let's see, on average, maybe it, it's a bit, there's some variance there, but, um, you know, I think anything over about 10% would be a bit extra on the uh, demand side, but, you know, to, um, uh, to Ben's point, we, we would like to see probably how this will play out over time. You know, if we can fill up the treasury in a few months and then fund a few projects and see how that, that spin goes, it would be interesting. Um, uh, there's also the, the economic impact of having a, a lot of LPT locked up in a treasury too. So I mean, we, we could always think about that as a positive in a way, but uh, just a few thoughts. Yeah, actually, that's that's a really good point. Um, that uh, I, I think um, that John brought up uh, that that, that kind of counters that you know that um, ninety five percent or uh, I don't know, is that what you said? Titan is going to uh, the supply side because really most of that is actually going to the delegators. Um, so I don't know if that really could be considered going to either supply or demand side. It's really well. Uh, I think delegators are supply side because they're the ones you know arguably they're securing the network. Um, through their LPT, they're, they're, they're promoting and giving orchestrators. Like, there's nothing supply side about delegators, right? Or sorry, there's no demand. There's nothing demand side about delegation. It's, it's completely supply side, in my opinion. So, I, you know, just to play devil's ad kid, I just want to jump in here. And obviously, this is going to be an unpopular opinion. Not that it's my opinion at all. I just kind of just playing around with some words here. What if... You know, what if we aggressively wanted to expand the supply side or the demand side and we would say that, you know, 50-50, right? It's a 50-50 balance uh, between the importance of supply and demand. And so therefore you would say, well, 50% of inflation should go to building on uh, demand side. And um, you could say that by doing so, you'll get even a healthier balance of, of, of demand, the supply demand, right? Is that, is that really that detrimental to the supply side? Because the purpose of this is to grow the ecosystem, to, to generate ETH rewards and to actually do more work. And the only way you do that is by aggressively growing the, supply, the demand side. So well, again, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna speak for everyone, but I think that uh, at least my feeling is, and I, and I think a few other orchestrators, that if this starts out and it works and there's, if we see, um, uh, you know, demand increasing. I think um, uh, I'll say most orchestrators are probably fine uh, increasing the the reward. Uh, let's see, the, it's te technically called the treasury reward cut rate. Um, but um, until we see some sort of results, it's. Um, I mean, there's it's been several years where I mean there has been you know money that has been available for the uh, supply side, and um, currently, I mean, we just haven't been seeing much growth there um so uh you know I, I think we just would like to see some results before we you know are willing to results and to... and like 50 percent. how much is that a year like f forget the balance and you know all that stuff why would you need like a hundred million dollars sitting in a treasury until it's a hundred percent proven that there are serious builders who want to build like killer applications like, what do we need need that much money in a treasury for? What's the point? Aside from just taking it from the supply side and putting it there to have it, I, I don't understand the uh, just the meaning behind having that much money in a treasury. Yeah, I, I guess. Well, the point of the treasury is to 
is to support public good funding for the ecosystem, right? Right, but we can do that with you know, seventeen hundred bucks a day, easy. Again, it's still six hundred thousand dollars a year. Yeah, at current prices, um, that seems like a lot to me. Sure. Yeah, but I mean, there's also, you know, Coinbase is getting most of the hundred percent of the rewards right now, anyway, and you know they don't do much to su to support the 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 demand side at all, right? So, really, you're 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 probably moving those. And again, these are just ad devil's advocate questions. I'm just just speaking out loud. Um, you know, you arguably are taking it away from the people that are doing the least and hopefully giving it to new people that can do the most, right? Um, that I think that would be the, the purpose of that. But but I do agree, I will caveat that I believe that the amount, like 50-50 is just an out there number. I just, I just wanted to, to, to raise some eyebrows. Um, but like, you know, this, this, this idea that it's an adjustable metric that is on, uh, voted on chain, I believe is probably the best, the best feature of this entire proposal. Because, you know, we can easily start with 5%, 1%. I mean, we could start at 1% and review this in three months and go to 5% and, you know, decrease it if we see no value, right? So there is a nice um, on-chain metric here that can be voted on. So I think that's, that's see, a positive. The problem with that, though, is the, if we're talking about the current on-chain voting mechanism, it is significantly weighed towards a small group of individuals that have all the life you're delegating, right? Yeah, I mean, if this goes to a vote, um, it takes one person to vote yes or no for like none of our votes to matter. Um, I know it's a chicken and egg problem because what we're proposing here is supposed to address that, but to do to get to that point, we have to vote with the current system. Uh, so we don't actually have a say um, necessarily, even if all of us in this channel pooled together, um, one person can swing that vote whichever direction they see fit. So that part is is really hard to to justify. Um, but again, like I, I am not against giving like 20, 25 percent, you know, 30 percent of my LPT rewards. If the concept is proven, demand increases and we're all making the ETH like we're supposed to be instead of counting on LPT. Um, but it hasn't been proven yet. That's just my opinion, my two cents. Hmm. That's all. So what I'm also hearing is, so I just wrote down some things like, you know, it's adjustable, start small, you know, baby steps. How do you eat an elephant? You know, one bite at a time, right? Maybe start, maybe 12% is a little too rich to uh, to get somebody to, to jump into the pool. Maybe it's like a, a 5% and, and we, you know, test the concept. If we can see that it's generating demand, then we can review it. And guess what? If it's a big flop, you could say, well, you know, good thing we only started with 5% because we're going to probably shut this thing down, right? Right. Yeah. And, and Doug actually just put a really good point in the forum post. Um, he said, regarding the different treasury reward cut rates for O's with different amount of stakes, do you think this will encourage O's to split their stake and spin up additional O nodes, taking available O uh, slots from lower staked O's in the process? Basically, it would encourage a lot of people to game the system uh, so they get a lower cut taken, uh, which is a good point. Um, if you're doing a tiered system for for the tax, what's stopping someone from just gaming that? Hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, um, I mean that is definitely something that uh, I think would happen with um, uh, orchestrators that are mostly self-delegated. Um, I think the bulk of the orchestrators are don't fit, fall into that category. So um, it's not as easy to just, you know, start up another orchestrator and then get to have, you know, your delegators move over because um, we don't, most of us don't have much contact with who's delegating with us. Um, so I, I do think that is definitely something to consider, but I don't know that, um, again, other than, I, I think that most orchestrators don't fall into that category, although all it takes is one or two big ones that basically could take all the slots. That's... Can anybody speak more to the process for distributing funds? Because like Ben and a few people are saying, it's a lot of money to lock up. How can we feel comfortable that 
it's actually going to get dispersed in an equitable way that, you know, helps the network, but also doesn't, you know, disadvantage any single party. Yeah, so I believe, well, it it, it gets dispersed through on-chain voting, right? And the idea is that tier two treasuries or tier two DAOs will come and apply for the funding and they will kind of hand out all the micro grants or how, how like, like for instance, the, uh, the live peer innovators DAO that's spinning up, um, you know, that will apply to the tier one treasury for say a hundred thousand of its LPT that's locked up. Um, and we can prove that we're going to, you know, give it away equi equitably and like, uh, that that pr provides demand and so therefore you know the 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 community the the token holders will vote to give us that out of the treasury and then um you know if we come back for a second round of uh, funding then you know we have some history and if it's you know a big flop they are not going to give the dow money again and if it works really well maybe they'll increase it right so it, it's kind of a tiered system so if me as an individual orchestrator, de delegator, translator, transcoder or not, let's say I want to spend time and effort to try and build a platform, right? To drive demand. Mm -hmm. Do I have the ability to submit a proposal and who votes? How does the vote get counted? Right. Cause same thing with like, uh, you know, if it's based on LPT that weighs the voting, you see, you see what I'm saying? Well, you would probably if you were if you're just an individual developer, you would probably apply to the, the the tier two DAO, like the innovators DAO, which is like a more off chain DAO where we have you know a structure for how you apply for funding. We do rounds. We have a small committee of people who can act quickly and and vote to hand out the funds, right? Um, but that being said, I don't I believe anybody is allowed to submit an LIP or a proposal. Or anything to uh, on chain, right? Um, but you know, so but it, it's it's a big process, right? Is there a so talking about the difference between L one L two? Is there a set um, distribution of this? You know, let's say seven hundred fifty k, twelve percent, whatever, between those two. I mean, are they separate DAOs or how does that work? So the tier one treasury is a fully on-chain treasury that's built right into the protocol. And mm -hmm. it can only do transfers based on uh, voting, like on-chain voting of LIP or of, of, of LPT, um, which makes it very rigid. And we probably only going to distribute funds, you know, once or twice a year. And it's going to be like, a good portion of the treasury funds once or twice a year, right? Something like this. So it's not it's not meant for like individuals. It's meant for distributing right, that, that only to DAOs. Is that correct? Or can an individual actually apply to the L one or treasury well, or to the treasury? I guess is the right term. I like I like I said. I believe anyone can create an LIP. Like it doesn't have to come from anybody. It can just like any you know. Papa Bear Solar Farm can submit an LIP saying, "Hey, oh, no, no, I understand that. No, but I'm saying, as far as uh, requesting the funds that this is Treasury is um, going towards, um, to, can that Treasury only um, pay out to to DAOs that have been? Um, I, I don't even know what the process is. No, been accepted. No, the DAO. Oh, so, okay, okay. The Treasury can pay out any yeah. any ETH address. So." Whatever. Okay, so 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 you're saying that that the process, if I individually wanted to go and do it, would be to create an LIP, uh, and then that that would be how you would get money from a the yeah. treasury directly if you didn't go through a and DAO. That's right. You have to create an LIP, oh, okay. okay, and then in the governance area of the um, of the explorer, every token holder would have yeah, to vote I, no i understand how that works i just didn't even think that that was uh, an option of of a way i mean i doubt that that would be a very popular way to do it um because i know it costs money to create an lip but um i, I just didn't even i, I thought it, it was just all done through DAOs. um well the DAO submits the lip to receive the funding 
and then the DAO. Then the way the way LivePeer uh, Innovators DAO works is we run a contest. We we gather. So this is a retroactive funding. So this so the the DAO has formed. It has no money in a treasury. It actually has no treasury at all. Well, IP Innovators DAO has no treasury. Has has a nothing. We are just simply running a contest and getting together a list of addresses that deserve retroactive funding. Right. So people have built tools, widgets, pl applications based on LivePeer. We run a contest all off chain. Uh, we gather the results based on this event. Then we submit a proposal and an LIP to the treasury saying, hey, we've run this contest. Here's all our results. Here's all the footwork we've done. You know, it's totally public. We would like to apply for a round of funding of 100,000 LIP. And this 100,000 LIP will go straight into a split contract, which will pay out all the contest winners immediately um, based on um, what we've seen. So we put forward this proposal. Um, the community, the LIP hold token holders see, hey, there was a lot of work done into this and everyone that's getting a proportion of this round are getting their are get are appropriately getting allocated this based on the DAO. And um, once it goes through, then that hundred thousand would get dispersed directly to essentially all the participants of the of the contest, right? So what we're doing as a DAO is we're doing all the footwork in order to, you know, move quickly, find applicants, do all these things. But the on-chain transaction to the L1 treasury is like once a quarter, you know, every half a year or even just once a year, right? Because that, that requires a, a giant vote for every LIP holder, which is like, you know, that's just tough to organize. Yeah, I, I didn't realize that's how it worked. So thanks for the explanation. Yeah. So the idea is, um, oh, and then the, the way it works also is the DAO, and I haven't finished the light paper for this. So this is obviously going to be explained in the light paper. I've been quite busy doing other things. But um, the idea is of the uh, 100,000 LPT that gets distributed to the contest winners, 10% uh, of that is going to get redirected to DAO members who put in time to get this thing going, right? And so again, the L1 treasury, all it knows is it's sending one transaction to one smart contract, and that smart contract is gonna divvy up all the funds that we have set forth in the proposal. So 10% will go back to DAO members for their efforts, 90% will get distributed amongst all the winners of the contest, and we run around every you know, six months, something like this. Um, so yeah, so the idea behind the, uh, the live peer innovators DAO is that we're going to be the first DAO, hopefully to submit a proposal to the live peer treasury. So, you know, and for those here that are in the live peer innovators DAO or have applied, you know, we're kind of making this up as we go, right? These are kind of just theories and ideas at this point. Like they haven't, there's no formal you know there's no formal um thing yet this is just you know still in the preliminary pay, uh, phase but anyway that's that's the relationship between uh treasure uh, like a, at least the live peer innovators dao that that's the relationship to the tier 1 treasury is that the tier the tier 2 dao has no treasury like it doesn't actually have any funds uh, set aside and it doesn't actually custody anything um, in the meantime. Well, once it gets paid out, then that DAO's own governance will manage uh, funding of its various projects, right? Well, I'll say it again. To understand that correctly, that uh, just to recap what you're seeing on the, on the, on the level two, uh, once a DAO gets funded, um, they, their, their own governance within that DAO would would manage distribution of funds for various projects. Well, no, because that will have already been done beforehand and the split contract will actually send all the funds to the end recipients immediately. So th there won't be any funds for the DAO to have a treasury. Okay. 
okay? So it, when, when you build the split contract, you say, hey, there's, there's 10 winners, um, there's tw 20 winners of, of this contest, you know, first one deserves, you know, 5%, 10%, 20%, whatever. You, you, we, built, we, we, we have that formula already built based on the results. And anytime you send, and the way a split contract works is the amount, the minute you send any asset to it, um, it gets redirected to other addresses based on the, the contract, what you put into it, right? So, so that's all proposed at the original proposal going to the L1. Yeah, so the, the original proposal has the results of the contest built into the, con, into the in, split contract. And, so and it's, it's a, more of a retroactive thing than a, you know, let's fund a working group for six months and see what they build kind of thing. It's, it's more of a, that, um, a retroactive approval that's what, with LIP. That's what the LIP Innovators DAO is, is a retroactive funding uh, uh, system. Okay. So is there the design um, support other systems that would be more like that where you know a working group is funded for six months or something? Yeah, I believe the live peer community node, like the grants node, is gonna come up with their own system for doing that. Because they, they are gonna be another they're gonna be so there's the retroactive grants and there's like the the future grants, and those both work very differently. And so future grants are like what the community, the, the grants node is currently doing, which is they have a treasury of stake. And as applicants come in, they release those funds, right? So they would apply to the tier one treasury to fill up their treasury and then slowly distribute it over time. That, that makes a lot of sense. I think that's what a lot of us had in mind, um, but it, it makes sense there retroactive funding since we haven't had anything like this and we've needed it for a while so yeah the retro uh, actually that, that brings up something with the retroactive that um so basically the retroactive uh DAO would be running contests not even knowing for sure that they have the funds approved right because they're not applying for the funds until afterwards so they could be running contests that they can't pay out if they're not voted uh if they don't get voted yes for yeah, that's why when we do these contests, we should we should be making sure that we can drive confidence to the LPT holders that this is in fact worth funding, right? Like, because otherwise, it's like you know, Titan Node and Papa Bear make a DAO. Because you gotta realize the Live Peer Innovators DAO is just a, a concept. I mean, Papa Bear and Titan Node can get together and make like you know the Live Peer cool guys DAO. And, you know, the, the live peer cool guys DAO just, it's a contest for how cool, like cool glasses you wear. And so, you know, this guy won. And so, hey, we'll, 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 we'll propose that to the L1 treasury and the, and the token holders go, that's a stupid contest and we don't like who won. We're not going to fund that retroactive grant. Like that's just a bad idea. And so as the live peer innovators DAO, we should be creating confidence that yes we're getting lpt in the hands of holders who deserve it right and so yeah like it's it's retroactive um we don't get funds prior to us running the contest yeah it just seems to me that um that could just be misleading to run a what, what, maybe contest is just throwing me off to call it a contest but um it almost seems like we should just be choosing out of projects that have already just been put out and i say we but the, the dow should be putting out pro, uh choosing out of projects that have already been finished and submitting those saying i think this is a good project this thing is actually doing what it's supposed to do or this is benefiting the okay. live peer but to call it a contest that you know hey you know what we're, you can win uh you know if uh or ten thousand lpt if you know you're select if, mm -hmm. if you win but then not be able to deliver on that, that, oh, that I think, leaves a bad taste in people's mouth. I think you bring up a good point. The word contest is the wrong word. Um, okay. it, it's a round, I guess, is what you would call it. And so anyone can apply for the round of funding. And if you meet okay. certain criteria, you're just going to get awarded it, right? Yeah, I would, I would say that criteria would have to be pretty strict because I mean, we're in an industry and space where people get 
funded a lot of money and don't do anything. But again, this is after it's retroactive. Done it. this, this is after it's already been finished. The, the, okay. The, the, okay. The one. Sorry. Yeah, retro, retro. Okay, so it's not a contest because you're not actually competing. You're just applying for funding based for on something you've already finished. Something that you've, you've already, already finished. finished. Right. Okay. And we have the ability of saying, hey, if you've generated this much traffic, if you've done this type of event, if you, you get 5,000 LPT or 1,000 LPT or, or whatever, right? And so as we do a round and people apply, and we can apply, you know, maybe it's as simple as like, because maybe someone built something really cool, but don't, this is why the DAO is in charge of reaching out to these people saying, hey, we would like to pay you, or you'd like, we'd like to fund you for the work you've done here. Make sure you, you know, apply for the, the funding for this, this round, right? And so we got to guide them through that process. And once, or even if they have a public wallet, we can say, hey, we, we know you have, um, you know, uh, a, a genosis genosis safe you know your dao we'll we'll just apply for you and we'll you know or something you know and we'll we'll send you the funds so but the idea is as a dao we we're, we're going to run this program to run a round we're going to get all the round results right and then from there we can submit an lip to fund a, a split contract that will fund everyone according to the results that we'd like you know, and then uh, and included with that is ten percent go to DAO members for their contribution. So DAO members can get uh, compensated for the time and effort they put into running this DAO, and there's also no treasury funds that the DAO has to manage, uh, which can be, um, you know, can be very difficult to get funding if you're like, like, like. It's very easy to, to, to build confidence in an L1 treasury vote if you know that the funds aren't just going to go to a, a dear tier 2 DAO that's just going to get hacked or hijacked. Um, when you know it's going to a straight split contract and everyone who gets funded is that says they're going to get funded is going to get funded um, through a contract, then again, that builds a lot of confidence. Unless I'm completely missing the mark, but that's that's the idea I had around this. Yeah, that makes sense to me at least. Yeah, and so, you know, this the, the initial conversation comes back around to you know, is it twelve point five percent? Is it five percent? Is it a scaling percentage? Is it you know, um, the tier two DAOs still have to apply once in a while. And they have to, you know, and I'm sure there's some sort of minimum amount maybe to apply to as an LIP because, like I said, anyone can just, I can just vote. I can just pour, put forward an L, uh, LIP to move all the funds from everyone else into Titan Node's wallet. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's the LIP. Now, uh, most likely it's going to get voted down. Uh, but it doesn't stop me from proposing it. So um, typically, if we want token holders to vote, we're probably going to want to have significant votes, not that often, that can be supported by a great amount of documentation and uh, resources to prove that, yes, this is a good purpose of the funding. So in theory, um, someone like Coinbase, if they don't want to be funding this stuff they they could just like kind of they, they could vote against this and have i mean I, I don't know how much stake they have but i i know it's a considerable amount i mean they potentially have the ability just to basically lock everything up in i don't know why they would want to do this but i'm just theoretically to basically lock up everything up in the treasury or, or anyone that was just a a high stake uh or has a, a lot of um, lpt could just vote against any L, any uh DAO receiving money if they, I mean, just, I can't think of a reason they would want to, but they just theoretically could do that. Yeah, it's a Sybil attack, right? If you own 51% yeah. of, of yeah. the LFP, then you can kind of propose and vote anything. And, uh, you it's know, never going to get passed unless they want it to be. <laughs> Got it. I was just, just, yeah, this is just uh, all new to me. So it's uh, things I'm just kind of thinking through. Yeah, I mean, this is, I guess. 
This is the entire argument around crypto is the kleptocracy nature of it, right? Um, the more money or more shares you have, more power you have, and therefore, yeah, like, just kind of how it goes. Yeah, right? I don't think that, I don't think that's unique to crypto, but yeah. Sure. Yeah, I don't think it's. In, yeah, you're right. It's not at all. But so the question is like, yeah, what what do we have to work with here? And yeah, so yeah, this is why putting forward proposals that are going to be um, accepted by I mean, likely, li likely, if, likely, likely that situation I brought up wouldn't come up because at that point they would probably not. Th then I would guess that the the LAP ninety two wouldn't be approved in the first place if this was a, you know, if the people that had enough funds to do that didn't want uh, money going out for whatever reason. I mean, maybe this whole conversation is moot because, like, how do we know that Delta is going to get approved? Like, maybe. The whales out there are not going to want to pay a tax. And so it doesn't even matter if it's 5% or 1%. You know what? Absolutely not. And uh, Delta just doesn't get pushed forward. So, like, that's that's definitely a possibility. Yeah, it's it's for sure a possibility. I, I just know that it seems like Life Peer Inc. really wants this to go through. Um, obviously, it's not completely up to them, but... They're really, really pushing for this. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. But I think it's good to go through all the possible outcomes. Make sure we're not caught by surprise at some point. Yeah, I have yeah. a feeling that even whales like Coinbase and Binance, I mean, their incentives align with the network growing in, in demand, right? Like, I mean, are they even paying attention? Like, they might not even vote, right? They, they might not. And so, yeah, that's absolutely true. Roll the dice. And so, and so, let's, okay, so anyway, I talked a lot about the Innovators DAO because I still have to create the white paper for it and build some little diagrams and stuff. Like I said, I, I was going to do that this week and then I didn't. So there's that. Um. But let's let's get back to just the LIP ninety two specifically, which is around the the cuts, so the twelve point five cut and the seven hundred fifty thousand LPT cut or the the ceiling. So so we we talked about the 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 percentage cut a little bit. You know we're thinking uh, right off right out of the gate twelve percent is probably a little too rich. Maybe something like five percent is more uh, palpable. And uh, and likely also more palpable for for large stakeholders. Um, so let's jump into the ceiling. Right now, it's proposed at seven hundred fifty thousand ceiling. Does anyone have any comments on the need for a ceiling? The current set amount of the ceiling. Um, yeah, what are opinions on the ceiling? Uh, my my only opinion is that. It's so high that it's almost like it doesn't even have a cap. And that's just what it feels like. It's going to take two and a half years to get there. About. Yeah. So I'm not, yeah, I don't know. I don't really know how I feel. Well, about from it. memory, I, I think that actually um, in Doug's proposal, I think it said it was a thousand days based on current um, conditions, but I, I'm going from memory. I'm just trying to find it now. Uh, it would take about a thousand rounds uh, to meet this value um, based on what is that? Um, if the source of LPT for Treasury. So it's, um, it's more than. It's like three years almost. Yeah. But yeah, to your point, it's, uh, it's, it's, quite, a, it's quite a bit of time. Yeah. I mean, the way I see the ceiling is it's a total stopgap for it not being used and just kind of like, like if the LIP just never gets used, if the treasury never gets used in two and a half years, it's basically dead. And so therefore you just cap it because there's no reason to let it grow out of control. Yeah. But well, if it's, bring, if it's getting that, that, that much in just three years, there be, sorry, go ahead, Ben. Yeah. No, 
just going to say if if it's going to hit that cap and it like it hasn't been used and the funding isn't going places then that is a whole another problem in itself um well what i was going to say is should do, does there need to be a mechanism for money to well i don't know how what, our money our lpt i guess what what happens if it doesn't get used over i mean is there a limit on that at some point not uh not the amount brought in but uh um, burn it can it I mean, like, what happens? Like, does it get burned? I mean, if it doesn't get used, I mean, like, what happens to it? Um, like, if it's there ten years later, pretty sure it just stays there. So, see that—that's uh, a huge flaw in my book. Why would we be giving up a percentage of our rewards if it's just going to sit in a pile somewhere? I mean, ideally, it doesn't. I think it's just a stop, like a like a fail safe. Just like, like you don't expect fail safes to to happen, but you put them in place so that it doesn't get out of control. I mean, three years of funding not going anywhere or not enough funding going anywhere is, is out of control, in my opinion. Regardless of if there's a cap or no cap. Um, if that funding isn't going anywhere and we're paying for it, I mean, just, what's the point? I mean, might as well just burn all that LPT. We've already sacrificed it. It's going to sit there. Might as well increase the value of the LPT we have. Well, this, I mean, arguably there's no difference than LPT going into a treasury that just gets locked there indefinitely and burning it. It's the same economic effect. Well, the supply doesn't change if it's just sitting there. The supply changes if we burn it. And that looks better for LPT because there's less in circulation. I mean, technically, it's not in circulation, right? But it still exists. It's still on chain. Try, try and explain. You know how hard it would be to explain. Though it's just basically sitting in a in a, uh, in a treasury that's not being that won't be used versus it was burned. I think I think that the optics of that are just. I mean, it's it's pretty complicated to explain live pairs economics to a lot of people anyway. So, um, I, I think people understand a burn, you know, mechanism versus it's it, it was voted to go into a treasury and didn't get spent and again these are all like you know worst case scenarios but um it does seem like there should be some kind of plan if it doesn't if it isn't used on what happens to it well maybe um, it, w would just lowering the ceiling be better just say hey listen well that was the other thing and then also is there should there be a lower ceiling to, especially to start um, or i guess just in general or does the ceiling even need to be I mean, should the ceiling be a percentage versus a fixed number? Percentage of LPT hmm. outstanding. That's interesting. Yeah, like why is it a fixed number? Why wouldn't it be just, you know, 3% of all LPT and inflation are in circulation can be in the treasury at, at any given time. That's the max. Once it hits that, you know, it stops. Which, again, 3% is actually like a lot more than 750,000. But, well, yeah. two and a half is it, two and a half is what seven fifty was is based on. So um, it's not probably not all. I mean, it is more, but uh, not a lot more. I was thinking more like one percent then. Um, but yes, uh, but then but then again, it's not a fixed number then either. So that's an ever increasing yeah. number, no matter what you choose if you go with a percent. So um, yeah, more in favor of a fixed number, but we would want to dial that in based off the um, whatever the inflation per the percentages that we're cutting for the treasury so like five percent would take a lot longer to fill up than 12.5 you know to get to 750 right so what so what what were you what are you saying john i mean i understand that uh, obviously i don't know that, let's say if we do five percent yeah maybe if we do a five percent we aim for more of like a 250 250,000 cap for example with, whereas maybe with the 12.5 it 750,000 does sound about right. Um, it still would take like two years to fill it up, but I think that's that's long range vision and we can always adjust that. I think um, a two year range for filling up a, a treasury is fine because like LIPs mm -hmm. don't happen very often and to get people to vote and coordinate within two years to drain the treasury, like that's this pretty tough in itself. Like, at six month intervals, that's like four rounds. Sure, but uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, even just two LIPs a year, like that doesn't happen very much, and it's mm -hmm. pretty uh, 
unless unless you know this treasury is the thing that makes lips or or governance say, I, like I, maybe it just I enables governance more frequent yeah like i think it would when was the last time we uh, created a, a poll you know uh and and you know did a governance thing was uh, october 1st 2022 for the round length parameter uh, which got a 99.9818% yes vote with and what was the participation on that 96 votes 96 votes but yeah we don't know the participation like how uh, how much lpt actually was behind that or is that somewhere uh total participation was 38 percent of all lpt okay so 38 percent and and 33.33 percent is needed for quorum to for for a vote to pass so you know the last vote we had 96 people vote they all voted yes and we just passed the, the threshold of the the particip the uh, LPT in order to uh, to make it go so forward, lengthen the rounds. Yeah. Um, most you know, uh, m most people were non voters, right? Like the the problem with the funding for L one is like like the the Delta proposal. I think it'll get the participation needed, the thirty you know the, the thirty three percent needed to for for something to happen. Um, but like voting like a like a dow voting to release funds out of like i just it's going to be to get that quorum of 33 percent like that's hard um that's that you know if you're if you're doing votes every six months i, I just don't know how much unless it may be it just makes people more aware of voting and so they do it more often but um I, and well, the nice thing is we can also like anyone can put forward a, a proposal to change these parameters, right? So, you know, if we start with five percent and two hundred fifty thousand LPT, you know, it it won't take long for someone to say, hey, this is this is working really well. We should we should increase this, or hey, this is not working at all. Like maybe decrease it, right? I think it's a good idea to start small like we were talking about and um but one of the other things to think about is if we're talking about like a retroactive funding as one of the first things that gets funded how important is how important is it to get the treasury filled up sufficiently um to start with you know um you know maybe one of the first things we do being like a retroactive funding might be a, a lot of costs um and maybe some other projects might be smaller down the road I I don't know, but if we start out small, it will take, you know, perhaps months to get the treasury to a point where it can um, fund what it needs to fund. Uh, yeah. But at the same time, I think it's a safe bet, you know, um, it just we have to realize that limitation of it. Yeah, like, like uh, the library innovators DAO, like, yeah, we're probably going to have to wait for six months of, of building up before before we get enough LIP there to, to do around, you know? So, you know, the, the, the Delta will go forward and then you're going to have to wait about six months for it to build up, uh, for say something like the, uh, retroactive funding for, to, to build up enough funds to, to do around, to justify the, uh, but that six months is used for running, uh, 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 gathering of participants for the round, you know? That's there's a lot of work yeah. that needs to be done in order to um, to uh, get people to you know every past hackathon participant we we need to reach out to and say hey you know you've built something in a hackathon on Live Peer would you like to you know submit for retroactive grant uh, funding you know um oh. and and that takes a lot of effort and then therefore six months of of work that DAO members are going to put in they should be compensated for that. So the round has to be large enough to also then pay for the DAO members uh, for their contribution. So, you know, if there's only uh, $100,000 worth of LPT to hand out, you could say, well, you know, 10% of that goes to DAO members. Well, maybe there was more than $10,000 worth of work done, right? Just to run this contest. So maybe that's, that's not enough, right? 
between you know t uh, six or eight administrators who are running this thing you know ten thousand dollars split amongst them is two thousand dollars like and then your retroactive funding there's 20 applicants and you know they get a hundred ninety thousand split between them so they get like a few thousand dollars um that's probably not all that motivating um especially when compared to other retroactive fundings where they're handing out you know i think live peer got four hundred thousand for for Ar from arbitrum or something like this so yeah, that that first one might be a good benchmark to the cadence and the cut of what we need to need to figure out but I'm I'm not the accountant type, so a lot of numbers there. Do we know of any other DAOs that are being um, proposed for you know to uh, access the treasury? There's currently none that I'm aware of, okay. other than the live peer grants node, which they will probably just once uh, once Delta goes forward, they'll probably just convert and you know created a DAO. Right? They basically are a DAO already. Like they run a multi sig, they there's a couple of them, and they run a a GitHub repo. So it's you know pretty pretty much a DAO already. Yeah, I was just curious, just trying to get an idea of like um, you know um, how much LPT would be um, around at you know at even five percent in in six months. Um, it looks like that'd be about uh, doing this in my head. I, think around 60,000 LPT, something like that. In six months? Um, actually, I think more than that, like 72,000. I'm kind of, I don't know, maybe, maybe John, maybe you're better at math and you could figure that out. Uh, I was basing that off of uh, 8,500 um, LPT being minted a day and taking 5% of that, doing some rounding off in my head. Yeah, that's all right. So how much, 8,500? A day? I think 8,500 are minted a day based on the okay. explorer. So 425 LPT a day mm -hmm. times 30 days times um, uh, six months, say. Six. So 76,000. 76,000. 5,500 so. LPT times current $4. is $300,000 in six months, US. Uh, you know, and say the, the innovators DAO took all of that, right? I think that would be a nice round to start with. But that's not giving yeah. any opportunity to any other DAOs that would be applying for this funding. Yeah, no, no. I was just, just thinking theoretically just uh, how much would be in the treasury and then, not, you know, um, not knowing what other DAOs would be out there and need, need, or in applying for a cut of that. Um, it's hard to really say what, what what would be a, a good amount to, or what would be a, a reasonable amount to you know that we would need um, to make this successful i know beforehand with the grants program life Peer was running it was about uh 250 000 every quarter right i know i know we never really got to that but um that might be something to think about in terms of what the current demand might be for the treasury um and then that was just a quarter, so you'd be looking at closer to five hundred thousand um, every six months. Um, this this comes pretty close to it, so maybe perhaps a little more. I, I don't know. Uh, and part of, part of of the uh, uh, what, what's in the current um, grants program, um, I think I remember Doug saying I think that that would be moved over to. Um, hmm into this or does that sound familiar to anyone titan maybe no uh i don't know i don't know what's in there i mean i don't know what the, what, what they have what is it, what their yeah, treasury looks i like. don't know what they have i have no idea what i don't know how it works um but what it would do is it would actually open up an opportunity for for, for competitors of the the node the grants node to come in and say hey listen like i can maybe run this better um and Maybe the token holders of of Live Peer look and say, "Hey, look, here's a proposal for a secondary grants DAO that has a a better system and maybe some better feedback time for applicants of a of an of these things." And so, you know what? We'd rather fund this 
this new DAO rather than the old grants node, you know? And so it brings in a bit of competition too to say, hey, where do we want to put these funds? How much do we care about retroactive versus future grants? And what type of teams do we like that we think are doing a good job, right? Yeah, I guess in my mind, for some reason, I thought that this was going to replace the current grant system. Um, but I, I guess um, it, it runs just concurrent to that. But the Live Peer Innovators DAO? Uh, no, the, the, this uh, Delta proposal with the Treasury, that this Treasury would run um, handing out money for grants, basically, uh, concurrent to uh, what's existing for Live Peer. No, I... They're the ones, no, no, no. What's going to happen is that the the community node is actually just going to, um, to dissolve and then they'll just get all their funding from the treasury. And so it, it's actually just a continuation of the current uh, live peer grants node. It's just how they get funding is instead of a group of selfless delegators that, that put money into it, um, and basically see no rewards, it'll just come out of, you know, the treasury in this more um, high level way. Okay, so, so, it do, so it does replace with the, the current grant um, system. Yeah, it, it, it replaces how they get funding. Right, okay. It, re, it, it replaces yeah, I, the I, node. Because the grants node, I don't, like, they, they, or they get LPT inflation, but I don't know if, like, what do they do for transcoding? Like, I don't think they're actually... I don't think it transcodes. I think it's it's literally just getting funding. Just getting and, inflationary. Yeah, it's just getting right inflationary and just like spending it on things. So, in, it, so we can remove that node because um, it's it's not a useful node, and um, and replace it with maybe a useful node so someone else can join the network and then it would just receive funding from the tier one treasury through on-chain voting. Got it. So yeah, um, that is how that works. Um, all right, so based on all that conversation, like like the grants node spends what, John said something around 250,000 a quarter. Um, that that itself is more than five percent of the uh, LPT inflation. Uh, so, and I, I just remember that just like a tweet I saw last last year around April or so. There's um, no way they're spending two hundred fifty. I, I think that may were. have been there. There was a quarter where they did that, but I don't. I, I again, I could be wrong, but I don't think it's currently at that level. Like, I mean, we can look it up. That was probably before they changed the whole way the way the grant system works. And even that, I mean, that just sounds crazy to me. They spent two hundred fifty on what grants? I'm just yeah, they were here. Um, they were saying like it was up for grabs or whatever. You know, that wasn't actually their actual costs, but oh yeah, yeah, they were saying they had two hundred fifty available to spend. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm, I remember. That I'm looking here. Actually, it's right on their uh, their tracker. Um, they're spending about uh, ninety five, seventy five a quarter. Here, it's literally on their tracker. Yeah, I'll put it in the link. To put. I'm looking at it now. Uh, so they have they have amount dispensed versus amount committed. So like we'll go with amount dispersed because that's like actuals. So like Q1 of 2022, they did 77,000. Q2 of 2022, they did 44,000. Q3, 26,000. Q4, 17,000. It's actually dropping off quite a bit. Oh, but that's probably because they just haven't been funded yet because the projects aren't done. Whereas like amount, so amount committed, yeah, 124, 95, 75, 47. So, you know, they're probably averaging 100,000 a month or a quarter. Quarter. Right, a quarter, okay. Yeah, well, it looks like less than that. Less than 100,000. Well, 20, hold on. 2022. Oh, that's weird. They have 20. They have 2021 and 2022 all listed together and totaled together, but they list the total as just being 2022. Um, do you see that? 
Uh, where you're seeing it by listed by quarter. G seventy four to G seventy one. No, that's actually just twenty twenty two, because the the formula is for twenty twenty two. Oh, just the bottom part. Yeah, if you look at the formula, it's the oh. sum of uh, rows G seventy one to oh, G seventy four, okay. which is uh, which is actually twenty twenty two. So that that is correct. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 in sense. the entire year, a calendar year of twenty twenty two, they they just they committed. 100, uh, sorry, 343,000 US and they dispersed 166,000. So if we're bringing in say 300, 600 a year through the treasury at 5%, then that covers the grants node times two. So, you know, you add it, you add the retroactive grant funding in there and we get you know 150,000 per quarter, per half year 75,000 you know per quarter basically for for like a the innovators dow based on current stuff right so you'd want to yeah yeah i mean if those are the only two dows applying for funding then like i think 5% would be uh conservative Yeah, that's a good window into the demand. That's those are good numbers. So you know, you said six hundred thousand a year divided by four. Did I get that right? The one fifty. One fifty a quarter. Yeah. And um, right now, literally, the 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 grants committee is spending committing about about that uh, seventy five thousand a quarter. So maybe the innovators DAO is something similar, but yep. you know, feels yeah. about right. I don't know. Well, I would think the innovator DAO, since it's retroactive, is probably the, they're going to get much. Cl they're they're the amount that they ask for is going to be actually what they disperse because it's already done. Versus, um, I guess, I'm, I'm assuming that these are projects that got started and never finished that didn't pay out everything. Um, for the grant for the 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 grant tracker. Yeah. I mean, like, if you committed, um, you know, 343,000, but you only put out 166, I'm assuming the reason that it wasn't fully uh, dispersed, the, the total committed amount, is because these projects either died out or, um, I mean, I can't, I, I don't know what other reason they wouldn't be paid out in full. Yeah, or, you know, maybe they just didn't follow through. Yeah. Well, that's what I meant, like, whoever that it was going to. Um, um, so, but, I, but my point was for the uh, a retroactive grant, that's going to, um, there's, you're not going to see a discrepancy like that because the work's already been done. So you're, um, the amount you're, you're committing to should be the amount that you're dispersing because it's, um, it's nothing you're waiting to see if they actually finish or it's not like paid out in, in steps and then they get to step two and stop. That's right. Um, yeah, there is no, there's no committed amount. It's just results. Like the, right. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. um, I don't know what that, for what that's worth, but yeah, um, uh, j just pointing out that uh, whatever the, the the retroactive grant is asking for is what, what they should be paying out. That's right. Uh, yeah, the retroactive funding is is significantly different than uh, the grants node and how it works. So yeah, yeah, that's kind of why. Yeah, hopefully it makes sense. Like a lot of said, moving pieces here. A I lot got, of moving pieces. Yeah, th there is quite a few. L yeah, and a lot of nuanced discussion between the different types of DAOs and grants and treasuries and, and things. To get to 600,000 a year, if I'm doing the math right, we would need more than 5%, probably, right? Uh, it's almost like 1643. Uh, Oh, I was I was doing LPT, not dollars. My <laughs> bad. Yeah, no, like because at five percent right. would be at, at current price, current USD it would be six hundred twelve thousand a year. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. Well, based on that, I mean, if if we went with five percent, it'd probably be good to follow it up with some data on why five percent instead of just um. 
yeah, I was just right. randomly throwing that out. And I think using this, you know, cur uh, current grants um, amounts that have been spent um, give at least some basis for that. That yeah. it's still quite a bit more than has been allocated in the past. And um, it, it looks like specifically quarter one of 2022 really was quite a bit higher than any other quarter in the last two years. So it seems like a fairly decent, uh, you know, pretty good amount of money to, to be uh, putting out towards uh, public goods and uh, whatever term you want to use. But um, And again, I, I think that the, uh, at least something that I, I, I feel like I'm hearing here is that most of the people, at least that are on this call, I, I know a small group, but uh, are willing to commit even or more than that, but they would like to see how it's working out before it going, you know, all in, I guess is the lack of a better term. Well, there we go. Um, great. Do we have any more? So, okay, I'm going to, we're going to jump around to this whole, um, this other concept of, uh, uh, what do they call it? Adjustable tax rate, basically. Um, so I, my personal opinion is adjustable tax rates are, are, um, I, I don't like them. I think they're actually kind of dumb, uh, even for governments to use. I think it's kind of weird. Um, I think flat rate taxes actually makes more sense. Uh, in general, in a society, but that's just my opinion. Um, so let's talk about that a little bit. What? So that's that's my opinion. Does anyone have a good reason for an adjustable tax rate? So people low st low staked O's or low stake delegators receive you know um, less tax and uh, higher concentration O's or T or D D's basically uh, have to pay more. Uh, do we have any argument for that? I mean, I, I think that, you know, and again, I'm not saying that this is my feeling on it, but uh, just uh, if you want looking for an argument for it, um, I think that it could potentially help um, balance out stake and have, um, you know, stake move from higher um, stake nodes if we're trying to balance out the network, um, whether that's the goal or not, uh, that's a separate issue, but um, um, it, you know they'll they would in theory be able to offer better return or you know more inflationary rewards to their delegators which would in theory um you know uh, i think have stake move um as far you know I, I think also i mean me personally if it's a five percent i don't think it's as big of a deal as if you're talking twelve and a half percent but um so the, there's there's that um issue too um you know um you're taking you know 12 and a half percent of someone's potential income that's a bigger amount than five percent so or you know more than double so um for me personally i i i'm i would i'm a lot more leaning towards a, a flat amount if it's a, a smaller amount of um i forgot the exact term again the uh, the tax rate um or what do you call it the uh I don't want to use the right term, but but if, whatever the percentage is that uh, goes out, um, the smaller amount, I don't think it's as big of a deal. But um, but the, the one advantage being still that uh, if it were to be a um, progressive tax, for lack of a better term, it would be it, it could potentially help um, uh, move some or balance out the stake between uh, orchestrators. Yeah. I, I think the, the I don't know if it would actually work, but it's a potential. <laughs> I, I don't know how you could get around like just not it not messing things up because if it if you do let's say you do just delegators, for instance. So so it's not based on orchestrators, it's just if you have an X amount of LPT in a single wallet, you get taxed more. Okay, well, you just spread out all your LPT into different wallets and you've avoided that scenario in fact if it goes right down to zero you can just create 1000 wallets and have one lpt per and you've eliminated well i i think it would be on the the orchestrator gets taxed or not taxed uh, that has a, a higher treasury reward cut rate than a lower um orchestrator so that it would be done at the orchestrator level so if you yeah. wanted to break it up and 
uh, you, you wouldn't need to break it up into all those things. You would just have to move, you know, chunks of it to smaller ones if you wanted to get the full, um, you know, 0% tax, basically. Yeah, but then, right. But then all you do is say, hey, I'm a large bag holder. I mean, would it cause an orchestrator to just split it up into multiple orchestrators? And now you, like, I, I you know... Between Again, unless it's a self-delegating orchestrator, I don't think it's that, that easy. It's not as easy as it sounds um, because you're, it's hard to get your delegates to move along with you. Um, well, I mean, say it goes a bit more advanced and, I mean, it's all on chain, right? Or, I mean, I don't know. There's got to be a way to track and see if someone is spinning up another O just to do this. I mean, there, there has to be a way to like look at that on chain or look at the IPs of the the orc and see if they're well, just even if stacking. You doing that, there's nothing. There, it, I mean, that's that's fair game. I mean, it's a it's a permissionless um, network. Yeah, I mean, true. You're free to spin up as many as you want. I mean, the the problem with that is people will be able to split their own stake, but if they have a giant delegator, uh, most people can't reach reach them. So. It might work for like a bit of stake, but someone has a million LPT on their node from someone else. They can't exactly say, hey, pst, you know, move 500k here real quick. I also am curious about the implications of the health of the network by moving stake based on tax. Like, let's say that we have uh, Varys who, uh, big shout out to Varys, by the way. Uh, Varys has got, uh, you know, 2 million LPT, he's a very high-performing orchestrator, very healthy for the network, you could say. And then you have somebody who's got 1,000 1, LPT who doesn't tra transcodes, but maybe they transcode on a, a used potato, and uh, it doesn't actually, you know, it, it's just terrible. It's, it's not a good service. Do we really want to incentivize stake to go to low-performing, low-staked O's who are not performing well just because of tax? Are they not performing well because they're lazy, or are they not performing well because they don't make any money um, running an orchestrator on the network? Right. Because if you're going right. to tax them 12.5%, the same as you're taxing the guy with 2 million stake, not much incentive there to perform better, in my opinion. Right, or or is the same argument the case just backwards? You could say, well, uh, when a when a large orchestrator that doesn't do any work, you know, but a small orchestrator does do work, you know, um, does that progressive tax? But yeah, I, I I don't know, I, I don't know what's going with this, but um, yeah, like is that? No, I, I understand. I understand what your thought was. It, you know, like. Uh... Is there a reason that someone is a low stake thing? Is it because if it's performance based, do you want to encourage stake to move to a, a low performing orchestrator? But then what Ben's saying is, what do you consider, I guess, a low performing orchestrator? Is it just that they don't get a lot of work, but they're able, if they're, if they're able to, to do more, but they're just not getting a lot because it's a stake weighted, um, you know, we're so heavily stake weighted in, in how work is distributed. Um, there's, you know, a lot of different variables in play there. So, um, you know, uh, with the, with the blacklist that's been, um, uh, proposed also, um, and I see that they're, they've written at least a, uh, I've seen it, it there's a, a version of it that's, um, uh, it's been imp not implemented, but it's been uh, incorporated into a, 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 not a, not a release branch, but into a branch of, uh, live, live peer, um, you know, uh, that that will take care of um, a, a, a poor performing orchestrator based on their performance. Um, so that, um, in theory, shouldn't really hurt the network. But yeah, do you want to in, um, move stake to someone who doesn't perform well? Um, I mean, I, ultimately, I guess. I mean, my answer would be no. Um, if it's that they can't complete work in, in uh, you know under real time. But also at the same sense. The selection algorithm does a lot of that where you know if you not currently if you don't well yeah but if you can't maintain the work you don't get to keep the work so that's only for that's only per segment 
you know, like that segment's over, you're just as eligible again on the next one as you were the the, the one that before you dropped it. The the blacklist would would um, take it, it addresses that, but that's not in you know that that hasn't been implemented yet. But I mean, right now, if you drop a stream, you're you're just as eligible as eligible for the next one as you were the one that you dropped. You're not eligible for that same stream again if for some reason it comes back to you. Which actually is not 100 percent true. Um, I did see that there was a bad there there was a bad stream that you know I, you know I me mean, I like to look at all the, the logs. There was a bad stream that went through LAX where um, it actually um, got swapped out 109 times between all the orchestrators. Um, I think it was I don't know if it was over the weekend or on Friday, but um, and that was one quarter of all swap streams in LA. But uh, I saw that it actually hit my note. I, I swapped out on it seven times, so. Um, you know that was a just a bad stream that went through there, and it was the same stream, and I was able to re, to get it again. But I think that's just because everyone was knocked out of being eligible for the stream, so it was like, okay, we need we need someone to try it again. Um, another issue probably that should be addressed in the live peer code, but that's getting a little off topic. Um, Are they sending like four K streams or something? Like, why was this getting bounced around so much? I don't know what the air was, but um, I mean, the, if. I mean, if I couldn't transcode it seven times, I'm telling you something's wrong with it. Um, I have more than enough capacity <laughs> here for that. I wasn't super busy. Um, I I also noticed that, that that stream was moving around to a lot of orchestrators. I didn't calculate on every single one how many times it had moved, but I did see there were other ones where it went through like multiple times also. So I'm just going to say something was wrong with that stream. I don't know what it was. Um, I mean, I have the manifest idea if, you know, if someone wants to take, a look, I guess I could send that to someone at live here if they want to look and see if they can see what it was. But um, I, I just noticed that that stream was responsible. That stream alone was responsible for one quarter of all the swaps in uh, LA over a 24 hour period. You know what they say, if Papa Bear can't do it, no one can. Well, I mean, you know, I I, I know my hardware works pretty well, so I, uh, I'm not saying that there couldn't be a networkation issue, and I'm gonna, you know, drop a stream here and there occasionally, but uh, seven times on the same one, I'm gonna, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna say there was a problem with that one, and again, that, that's just on my node. There are other nodes that were getting swapped out on them as well. So, um, cool. Well, uh, that aside, um, okay, back to the progressive yeah, tax so, rate. Yeah, right? sorry. So. Yeah, okay. Is this, I guess, does the progressive tax rate have anything to do with performance? Or is it going to, like, like what is the Sybil attack for, a per, per, like, on orchestrators if this happened? Like, would, it, would, an or, would a self-delegating orchestrator really take out 10 orchestrators in order to lower the tax? You know, the Coinbase, the, or the whale, the, the self-interested whale. Is it going to be a bad attack or are they going to just take that and spread it amongst delegators, uh, amongst orchestrators that are naturally lower? And so, right. Is there a difference? Like if someone wants to take out 10 orchestrators and they have a million LBT, like they can just do that today, right? Does the does the tax does yeah, the progressive tax rate do the, that, the, or is it like what's the incentive though to do it now? I guess is the difference versus. Well, there would definitely be no incentive to take. Well, unless you were just like trying to get more work for yourself or something, but it doesn't really. I think the only self like delegating high self delegating orchestrators aren't doing transcoding, so it, I guess it's um, maybe I'm I'm skewed because I. I, I I'm, I'm aware of that, but uh, they're not going to get more work for them. So, I mean, they're, they're not doing work now, so they're they shouldn't be. I don't think they're concerned with the work. Some of them are, have transcoding turned on, and I don't even know if they're aware of it. Um, probably back from the day when CPU transcoding was still something that you could do and, and get a stream or two. But my guess is they probably haven't touched their setups since you know in a few years, and they're just really in it for the um, the rewards, not for the fees. I mean, I, there was one, I, I can't think of, I, can't, I don't know their name. They were just, uh, a, um, an, uh, sorry, an ETH address, but um, it came up in chat the other day where um, I showed him that he was being swapped out and that uh, and his machine was crashing. So we said, 
why don't you try turning off transcoding and see what happens? And I, I didn't hear anything back that his machine wasn't working and he's no longer, I don't see him getting, I don't see him getting any um, selections either in the, in Brad's selection um, test. So I, I assume he just turned the transcoding off. Um, so again, I, I just think he just wasn't even really aware of what was going on. He was like, yeah, no, I got transcoding going on. You know, I got a CPU, I got plenty of CPU power. And we were like, yeah, but you you haven't been able to, successfully transcode any of the streams you've received. He was like, what? <laughs> you know. Um, so I, I'm going to guess that's probably the case with um, any other large one that just, you know, basically fails every stream, but does occasionally win a ticket because you can win a ticket uh, just based on that, that first stream coming in because the ticket's sent with that stream, the first ticket is at least. Right. I don't know if I, I, don't know if I rambled on there. No one knows what I'm talking about. But uh, Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, I, I want to quickly keep going back to this progressive thing. Uh, it also sounds it would be more difficult to implement. It would be a protocol, like a serious maybe undertaking on like a adding more feature thing. Um, yeah, and it's going to be more compute intense also for, you know, um, for the uh, on-chain, because it's an on-chain thing that has to do all those calculations. So, um you know, I, I don't know how much more it would cost um, in in fees to to do those calculations. Right. Yeah, I think that would be harder to calculate as well, but um, not impossible. Um, and then nothing's I, impossible. If then you to it. <laughs> scaling it also, like, like what's the upper echelon? What's the lower? Like, we're talking about like the difference between. You know, the higher ones pay 6% and the lower ones pay 4% or the higher ones paying 10% and the lower ones paying 1%. Like, like what is the spread too, right? Which is an entire debate amongst uh, state nations as is. So it's a, uh, I'm not sure how much. Well, of you know, I, I guess, you know, to... yeah. And going back to taxes and, and nation states, um, I mean, the wealthy people that are supposed to be paying the most tax usually have ways to get around it, which it sounds like would probably be the case here too. So, you know, um, there's always that to consider. There's always tax loopholes. So would it even be effective, I guess, just knowing kind of going with the nation state uh, uh, analogy, um, you know, knowing, knowing that the wealthy people generally pay a very small percent in tax. Um, would it, would it, you know, just considering that it would work the same way, it probably would. You know, there probably would be someone that figures out a way to uh, split up O's or uh, ways that I'm not thinking of right now. But, um, it, you know, it probably wouldn't be as effective as, as it, it sounds on paper. Right. Yeah, right. definitely. Um, and, and again, it's probably also not as big of an issue if with a smaller percent of tax, or I keep calling it a tax because I can't remember treasury reward cut. Um, um, and again, I'm only speaking for myself. I don't know how other people feel about that. Yeah, I mean, it's it sounds like the tiered system will introduce all kinds of loopholes and complications and just would be pretty complicated to get right. Um, so maybe a flat tax for everyone is the right way to go at least initially but i still think at least to begin with something a little lower than 12.5 would be would be good and you were you were talking about the amount that they spent last year which was you said about like 350 400,000 in total yeah. titan or probably mm -hmm. bear mm -hmm. so they spent 166 they they committed to 340 uh, through like about 345 but only paid out 166 oh so they only paid out okay so five percent you know if we're going that route i mean we have tons of leftover right if we have six hundred thousand usd or was it was it a hundred and thirty thousand dollars or lpt that they uh it was 166 thousand. it's in I dollars so uh, okay. but i assume it was paid in lpt so i don't know how the conversions work and all that stuff but um but so it, like going, going from that to 1.5 million USD is is quite the jump, even for a decentralized, you know, uh, public goods funding system, right? I would be much more comfortable seeing that around the 600,000 mark a year versus that much money when they've only paid out 
you know, 160k last year. Although, given that yeah, I mean, the, the 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 amount um, that, that LPT was worth at the beginning, 2022, like it, it it's also a little more difficult because I don't know. Or I guess That's true. I guess wait yeah. wait wait, but uh, funding is typically done in USD. Like when you apply for funding, it's in USD, right? You're paid in LPT, I think, but it's um, like but it's 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 a translated it is, amount. It is from, USD. From the yeah, USD. you yeah. you ask for USD, so it is actually it's a fair comparison because you're not really comparing LPT; you're comparing just USD value. Yeah. Right. So this this would actually be. You know, if if you're comparing it to the price of LPT back into you know 2022, the beginning of the year, in the middle of the year, um, this is actually a lot more than six hundred thousand dollars that's being put in uh, in the public goods funding treasury. Yeah, potentially. Yeah. If if you know if you're looking at it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think you have to look at it as dollars, but I mean that's you know it's three point you know three and a half times as much um, you know USD um, per year. So, and I, I know the goal is to get more money in to you know to uh, to incentivize new projects to be built. But um, and again, just my opinion, three and a half times more seems like a a significant amount, a significant uh, amount of of uh, more funds to, to, to give out. Yeah. And the idea is there's more places for it to go. If you have a public goods funding system and you're focused on demand, but I mean, to start 600,000 seems plenty for the first year. There we go. I would highly recommend somebody reply to that post and, or maybe come up with some examples of why 5% is the way to go. And uh, yeah, I would love to see the Delta proposal really uh, get 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 some momentum because um, once it goes through, then I think it'll inspire a lot of you know further actions to be taken with like tier two DAOs and like different you know engagements also within the community. I also think it'd be good publicity to have a the Delta proposal go through. People can start seeing that hey, there's there's a treasury now, and and that treasury funds can be distributed to builders, which I think is good. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, we've been talking about this for a while. Do we have any last comments about LIP92 or or treasure parameters or anything like that? Not for me. Cool. What we'll do is we'll move on to another topic, which was uh, brought to you by G2. Uh, G2, um, your topic was around, you know, gotchas around starting a live peer node do you want to tell us a little bit about your situation what you're running into and or what questions you might have g2 are you with us sorry to put you on the spot it's been like a, an hour and 40 minutes since we got to your topic so i'm sorry about this but um, yeah if you're with us go ahead We scared him away with all the topics of public goods funding. Yeah, don't. Oh no, it's not good. No, it's uh, no, no. I um, so for me right now, it's like we're getting ready to spin up a a uh, uh what you call it? A uh, was it orchestrator? No, so yeah, orchestrator. No, so for me, it's like you know, what are some like you know initial setups or like things that like maybe like running a note for the first time you you know maybe it's a good thing to know ahead of time things like that uh, as we get into it like this week and stuff like that starting spinning it up um have you looked into the startup grant uh yeah yeah yep so that's kind of like how we ended up getting there so we just finished like our first milestone um today so uh, moving forward we'll be building into like the notes cool yeah i Anyone got advice for G2? You were asking for gotchas. Um, mm -hmm. I, I guess we could probably touch on, on some gotchas. Um, I think 
my question to you is what kind of bandwidth and like GPUs are you working with? And what, mm. what region would you be spinning up your orchestrator in? Mm, that's a good question. I guess um, I'd actually, I guess based on what you think is probably a good range, then I guess I would, uh, you know, based on that, I'd purchase a computer or something for it to run on. I guess the other option would be, um, are there any like good cloud servers? If not, you know, a, a designated like, computer or something. Okay, one thing I think is really good to just state immediately is before you spend any money on this, mm -hmm. um, just understand that it, it's quite competitive and you might mm -hmm. not see a return on your investment um, until you can attract a bit more stake. I'm not sure what the rules are with the um, the startup grant at the moment, if that will mm -hmm. give you enough to like pay for a cloud server i'm not sure if it will um okay. it's quite competitive and it's not easy to attract stake and that's at the moment the main way that um we we make money essentially mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so just to understand like you know it, it costs a lot to get on board right now obviously mm -hmm. you've seen it's, i don't know if it's still above a thousand lpt just to get in so you got a pretty big initial investment and then mm -hmm. Uh, if you're, you know, paying for a cloud server or something, that's another mm. couple hundred bucks a month on top of it. Um, mm. Without significant stake, I, I wouldn't expect to receive a lot of work or a lot of income, at least initially. Um, okay. Yeah, it, it's kind of tough to say. I don't know if anyone wants to weigh in on that. Well, I yeah, I was just going to ask. Debbie Downer, are, are, I just, are you familiar with how LivePair um, distributes the work, like that it's based on the amount of stake you have, gives you a better chance of receiving jobs? Because it, it's not like, I don't know if you've done like ETH mining in the past where, um, you know, however much compute power you have, basically you can figure out what you're going to make. This uh, LivePair doesn't work that way at all. Um, this is mm -hmm. based on, you know, when there are jobs available, they get distributed um, to, to the nodes. Um, and then it's based... Um, 70% of that is based on how much stake you have. Like that's uh, mm -hmm. the higher the okay. stake you have, the better chance you have of actually receiving a job. Mm -hmm. And 30% of that's just a random chance. Um, so um, I just, if you're, I just want to make sure that you're not expecting like, um, if I run like a 1070, I'm going to make this much money and like it's a, right. it's a fixed thing. I mean, like, um, you know, it, it, it varies so much even, you know, for like, you know, for me, I, I have no idea what what I'm going to make in ETH um, a month. It's just like it, it's all over the place, and it's you know because it's um, you're only getting paid for the work you're doing, um, as opposed to um, like I said with like ETH, if you just are providing a certain amount of compute power, where it's all just split up between the um, you know by by the amount of um, uh, co compute that you have. So okay. I just want to make sure that you're aware of of that, and you don't go in like expecting that oh i've got this card it can handle 20 streams and i'm going to be having 20 streams all day 24 7 because that's mm -hmm. uh, um, quite a bit different than most other um protocols the way they um they they, they pay out okay. Okay. i would say too like um, um if you can do on-premise stuff like just start like inexpensive um i wouldn't be renting gpus just because well in theory like it doesn't really make sense to arbitrage because IPR actually should be a lot cheaper than actually renting a GPU. That's kind of like the purpose of it is is um, mm. is that low cost compute that that people have as spare capacity. So I would start with just something something out of your on your premise and see if you can get started that way. Okay. Um, I can give you some suggestions though for like the type of hardware right now. What works the best and is the most cost effective as far as a GPU goes would be an NVIDIA 1070 card. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. They actually pretty popular. <laughs> they, they 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 actually perform. They have the fastest performance right now, and okay. they support um, all the formats that um, that LivePair currently supports. In the future, you'll you'll probably want something different, but as currently. Um, there's no advantage to having a, a newer, better in a sense, <laughs> but a newer card um, mm -hmm. because you don't need those formats, and they actually right now actually transcode slower than the um, 
the 10 series cards, and especially the 1070 is like the the the, the most cost effective card you can get for um, for running live peer. And as far as the rest of the hardware goes, honestly, it's not that important. The what is important is your bandwidth and your latency to um, uh, the current ingest servers um, that are run by live peer, because that's where the bulk of the work comes from. So, um, I mean, personally, I really strongly recommend um, running a, a fiber if you have it. Um, mm -hmm. You can get away with not having fiber, but um, it may, it you know latency is is, is important. And um, and I I think gigabit is really what I recommend, even when you don't have a lot of work. Just um, I mean, you can get away with less, but um, I, I really advise gigabit if, if, if possible. And definitely you want a wired connection. You don't want to use, you can't use Wi-Fi. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and then what, what, where, um, and then if you want to know like the, the busiest, I mean, I don't know where you're located and I don't know if you're, if you're yeah. comfortable sharing that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm in the uh, Southeast. Southeast. Oh, um, mm -hmm. So like Florida. Southeast. Right. Oh, okay. Southeast. I just know if you meant U.S. or in the world somewhere, mm -hmm. uh, or somewhere on the uh, globe. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, so you're going to be then getting most of your work from the the New York node, which um, you know you'll be. Um, I mean, with a good connection, you're you're definitely close enough to receive work. Um, and and the East Coast is probably the busiest area. New York and uh, Chicago is where the bulk of right now of where um, Life Pairs work is coming from. And, Interesting. Uh, so you're you're in a pretty good location. I mean, it's ideal to be you know either in Chicago or New York if possible. But you know, um, I certainly wouldn't recommend renting anything there. Um, <laughs> okay, that's fair. Um, I can't think of any like specific gotchas other than just making sure that you, your expectations are realistic and uh, and you understand just how it works that. Um, it's a demand based network. So, um, uh, it's so definitely it's, helpful. You know, it, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. definitely different from like, because I've done like, like, like Rocket Pool and like ETH and stuff and like in the past, but yeah, it's a little different. So, I'm yeah, right. Like those like have calculators you can basically go and just, you know, say like, oh, yeah, this is what the cards I have and, you know, mm -hmm. this is what I'm going to be making a day. It, it, it does not work like that at all. And then the, the one other thing is, it's, I don't want to scare you off here, but what gets really complicated is you don't even get paid exactly by how much work you do. There's something that's called a um, probabilistic payment. Okay. So every every time work gets sent to you, you get it's like the equivalent of a lottery ticket that has a percentage of chance that you're going to win. So got um, it. Okay. So like so yeah, and it, it, that has to do with just like keeping the the cost down for like the calculations on chain. So it's mm -hmm. not like, oh, I've done this many minutes or this much, you know, computing, or um, I'm going to get paid exactly on that. It should average out to be about right, but you could get paid like right away, like when you've done almost nothing, or you could be behind. Over time, it should balance out, but uh, without getting too like into depth on how that works, um, it's... Um, you know just also it's that that's that that's certainly a gotcha when i first started it took me forever to get my first payment i mean it's I'd say it's balanced out certainly by now but um at first it was a really tough concept for me to really grasp but i've like, done <laughs> enough transcutting to get paid out here i see how many minutes most people are doing and i'm not getting paid out why not um so the, wow. that's definitely it uh, there's a lot of unique things in life beer so i mean i guess there's potentially a lot of gotchas but um it's um I don't, and I don't mean gotcha necessarily in a, a negative way. Just, just things that are just different. So that you know, right. things that you probably wouldn't be expecting. And um, yeah, especially it, if you're not like hanging out in the forums and reading what's going on in there. Or in the yeah, I'll jump in and say one of the biggest value adds is just like connecting with some of the people here. Um, so I definitely, definitely recommend doing that. Like there are some mm -hmm. really, really talented and skillful people, like running nodes. And if you have any questions, always feel free to to ask them and. And there's just a lot of good connections to be made here as well. So while you might not make a ton of money initially, um, mm -hmm. you'll be able to meet some like, you know, like we have Mike Zuper who has like 20 years of experience with system architecture. It's just, these are good people to, to be able to ask questions to. Um, so don't feel discouraged if you, if you set everything up and your node doesn't get a job for like six hours, because that, that does happen to smaller orchestrators. 
Um, mm. I think it's just good, you know, set your expectations um, and, you know, hope for the best, expect the worst, all that good stuff. Yeah, <laughs> on the other side, one of the greatest things about live here is the community is extremely helpful and nice. And if you have any questions, like, do not hesitate at all to post them up in Discord. There's um, people, very, very, very uh, helpful community. Um, there's like no competition when it comes to that kind of stuff. I mean, sure, and te technically we're all competing for work, but um, when it comes to like needing help with setups or errors or anything like that, um, there's always someone willing to help. Fire. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Some sure. points that I would I would add that I can think of off the top of my head are, um, you know, like having your. You know, there's just some there's some articles in the forum about how to how to run a node securely. So where you have like a dummy transcoder account versus an orchestrator account. Um, and so your orchestrator account's more like for calling reward. Um, so that's an important setup, I think. Uh, and then also just keeping your, uh, your transcoder accounts funded that you have to have enough for gas costs to win a ticket, so you have to claim the ticket. Mm -hmm. um, and then beyond that, uh, things like the Arbitrum connection can sometimes be trouble troublesome for like calling reward and and things like that so so i actually I actually run my own arbitrum node just for calling reward uh, because it's it's a little, it's more reliable than the hosted rpcs um but okay. uh yeah and then you know you can't run i don't think you run more than one node off a free alchemy account uh, i've i usually just get a paid one and kind of factor in the cost but um yeah, just a couple thoughts there. And there, there is a free one that um, that's run by uh, Off Chain Labs, who is um, the company behind Arbitrum. Um, it, I, I find it to be very reliable now. Um, you know, when it first oh. came out, there were a lot of issues, but um, I use that on most of my nodes. So um, interesting. It, hmm. it seems to work pretty well. I use uh, Third Web. You got some good free hmm. RPC stuff. And it's free too. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good one. I use it for all my nodes now. Do they have like multi chain RPCs, Third Web? They have like 900 chains. Holy cow. That's wow. and, it's like, it, and what are their like rate limits like on the free tier? Um, I don't know. I've got nine nodes running off it and haven't hit a, haven't hit a limit. Okey Here, look at this. Yeah, as long as they're all in different, if, as long as they're all in different really? regions, you should be fine. But if it, sometimes you'll run into limits when you're, um, just look at it. I just I posted a link. Look at how many look at how many chains they have. It's just like ridiculous. I'm gonna send this. I have someone who like runs a whole <laughs> bot business, and he's just been having such a hard time with Anchor. Like their pricing isn't right on their website, and their RPCs get rate limited. It's awful. This this is helpful. Yeah, I do. I'd recommend Third Chain or Third Web. They seem third chain. although uh, they said tomorrow, <laughs> as of tomorrow, they need you need to have an API key to authenticate. So I don't know. Oh, geez, what? Uh, you have to just create yeah. an API key. I think it's free. It's just like, I guess they were getting just spam. They have like an open, um, they, have, they had an open endpoint, and I think it was just getting spammed. So they're like, you know what? At least connect your wallet and like create a key. But it's still free, I believe. Yeah, so, so yeah. It sounds like, it, oh yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, you're good. Yeah, we're we're actually, so we're like building with, so our live peer application um uses a lot of third webs SDKs. Um so yeah, so it's definitely I can I can attest that it, it is free for sure. Awesome. Yeah, third web is I mean third web's just good in general for all the stuff they offer, so this is cool. For sure. So you've been developing like a like a live peer streaming site too? Yeah, so yeah, we so, so yeah, so I mean we've actually I mean, we've been building like the last three going on four years, but just kind of like, you know, like a lot of stuff's kind of like maturing, so to speak. So, um, so yeah, third web was one of those things that kind of came into play as because you need like you need something that kind of helps to manage a lot of the smart contracts when you're developing, and that that does help to have something that looks more manageable. <laughs> so, um, so that's what they offer, and it's it's helpful. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Third Web. Yeah, they have, they have quite the reputation. Everyone who mentions Third Web is like, yeah, those guys are they're doing good. Like, holy shit. 
How long have they been around? Man, um, I I don't know how long they've been around. Like where the public we've publicly been using it, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? Like, because they've they made a lot of iterations over time. I want to say probably just as much as we've been building. Only about the last three or four years they've been. They just have a bigger team. They got money behind them and stuff like that. And from the UK, I think a lot of big investors. Definitely feels polished. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Definitely cool. Okay, well, what I'm going to do is uh, we'll end it there. We've gone through all our topics and we've covered lots of conversation today. Um, yeah. So, uh, any last comments before we sign off? Cool. Cool. Uh, thank you all for coming, uh, being a part of the movement for uh, decentralizing the web and uh, uh, helping in the mission of uh, LivePeer becoming the world video infrastructure. Uh, great to see you, and we will all see you next week. Cheers. See you. Thanks. See you guys. Thanks, guys.